Are you tired of lugging buckets back and forth for an aquarium water change? Or looking like a renaissance surf fetching your king's bath water? Long live your turtle here, and in today's video, I want to talk about water changes, and I want to show you how I do water changes for my 75-gallon aquarium back here and my 100-gallon turtle tub a floor down in my garage. Let's get to it. All right, so I live in a second floor apartment. My 75 gallon aquarium is up here in our dining room and my 100 gallon turtle tub is downstairs in my garage. Now I know I'm young and jacked. However, lugging buckets back and forth to fill a 75 gallon aquarium um, between here and the bathroom or all the way up a flight of stairs between here and my garage, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna cut it. Um, that's gonna take way too long and for the record, if you're going up and down a flight of stairs with a bucket of water, that flight of stairs just extends infinitely and it just becomes a nightmare to do and it can get really messy. So I have no access to a water spigot outside that a house might have access to. And what I do have is a kitchen sink and I have a bathroom with a tub and a sink itself. So those are what I have to use to get water into my tank here and downstairs. So let's quickly talk about water changes. While water changes apply to basically all aquariums that are harboring life, uh, like fish, this is a turtle channel, so we're gonna be talking about a turtle tank. If you have a turtle you know, or if you are getting a turtle, you'll soon be familiar with how much waste they produce. It's way more than fish, and that needs to be taken care of. So one way to counteract all the waste that your turtle is making is, I have a huge filter that's way overrated for this tank size. Now, that does wonders, but you still need to do water changes. Why do you still need to do water changes? Well, the most obvious, it replaces dirty looking water. Over time, your water's gonna look a little more dirty. Really nothing you can do about that. Um, second is it replaces trace elements and minerals that are beneficial to the inhabitants, like your turtle or any fish that you might have in your tank. Um, they use those and it gets filtered out over time by your filter. And the last reason why is to remove any buildup of nitrates that you might have in your tank. Believe it or not, most people's nitrogen cycles are not perfect. If they were perfect, you would never have a buildup of nitrates. However, most people do over time and it's honestly pretty normal. So what you're gonna wanna do is water changes to remove that buildup of nitrates. For me, I do a water change every two weeks of about 25% of the water and every month about 50%. But obviously, if you're seeing things are getting kind of out of control and dirty and you're testing things and they're looking bad, do a water change, get that water clean so that your little turtle buddy is living in a non-toxic environment. That's obviously our goal here. All right, so there's a few ways to do water changes. There's a million ways if you look it up on YouTube. The simplest and easiest way to do a water change is to use the simple bucket and hose method where you use the magic of siphoning. But I think using a bucket and a hose is really only practical if you have a tank that's right next to a water source and drainage area, or if your tank is really small, like 10 or 20 or maybe 40 gallons, but these are a 75 gallon aquarium and a 100 gallon downstairs, I'm not gonna be lugging buckets back and forth. Now I mentioned a siphon and I wanna talk about it really fast, especially for those people that are watching this video and really haven't done water changes before and are brand new to this. A siphon is an awesome physical phenomena, in my opinion. Nerd. And what it uses is gravity, differential pressure, and molecular cohesion. Uh, yes, I did a little research before this video. It's actually way cooler than I thought, and I'll leave a link in the description if you guys wanna read up on what siphoning is really all about, but it's really easy to actually do. So don't get worried about all those things I just said. Siphons are really easy. So I actually drain this tank using the siphoning method. So there's only three simple requirements to get a siphon to work properly. Now, what you'll need is a reservoir or a place where your water will drain to that is lower than the lowest point that you're planning on doing a water change for your tank. So I'd say the bottom of your tank. Second, you need a hose to connect from your tank to this place that you're gonna drain your water. And third is you'll need to start this siphon, which will require either you suck on the end of the hose to get the flow going or you use a pump to help you out and do that. 
That's all you need, so it's really easy to do. And before we start, I just wanna say why I like just doing this simple siphoning method without other methods that we're gonna mention in a second. And that's because it actually takes quite a while to do um, because you're just using gravity, so it's pretty slow flow of water. And while I'm doing that, I can do a lot of cleaning in my tank. I can do a scrub brush on the side of the walls, get rid of any algae buildup. I can move around the sand and I can pick out big pieces of debris like the shed scoots of your turtle that are actually never gonna go through your filter or be sucked up by your siphon. And you can move around any sort of decorations. Um, it's just a good time to do that. So let's get to it. I'm doing a 100% water change. So we're taking all this water out. I'm doing a complete redesign of this tank. So I need full access to it, even the bottom. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna start up this basic siphon. And while this occurs, we can talk about different methods of draining and filling tanks that I haven't mentioned yet. Okay, so I complete redesign. So I took the whole basking platform off. Wouldn't normally need to do that with that design because it has those little windows. What we're gonna use is actually a siphoning hose designed for aquariums. It has this gravel vac is what they call it at the end, which helps pick up debris. Uh, but I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna put that gravel vac end in this side of the tank and then bring the other end all the way to my bathtub. All right, so we have this end into the bathtub. What we're gonna do is suck on the end to get that water moving to start the siphon going. Yes, this is turtle water, and yes, it can carry salmonella, so you have to be really careful not to get the water in your mouth here. One thing you could do if you don't wanna risk it at all is actually buy a pump that will start the siphon for you after you pump it quite a few times to get that water flowing. Same as sucking on the end, let's get to it. All right, so the siphon has started. And really all we do from here is wait. Let's head back. All right, so we have our siphon going. And while we have this time, I wanna talk about the three main methods of doing water changes that I know of. That could help you if you're interested in different methods that might be a little more efficient or faster than what I'm gonna show you here that I do with my tank. So the first method is what I'm doing right now, and that's using the gravity fed method. I'm using a siphon to take water from one high spot to a lower spot using a hose. You can do this down into a bucket underneath the tank, um, and that will drain your tank. Now, in order to fill up the tank using the gravity fed method, you either have to reverse the process of siphoning that we're using here, where you're gonna have to fill, say, a bathtub on the second floor, something that's higher than the tank, and start a siphon, taking water from there into the tank. Um, and that can be difficult. Or you could just fill a bucket and fill up the tank that way. Or you could use a hose spigot, your sink, or your shower head and attach a hose that uses the water pressure from your actual plumbing to fill this tank. So pros to using the gravity fed method is it takes no electricity and you're using the forces of nature to drain and fill your tank. So it's completely free. So cons are, it's a slow process to drain your tank, and even worse, to fill your tank, you're gonna need a pretty specific setup in order to get a re either reverse siphon or some hose attachments um, to fill up the tank. Now, another great method to do water changes is to use a water pump. And um, this is a pool pump, and it pumps out, let's see, 5,200 liters an hour. So this thing is extremely, fast and efficient and you're going to drain your tank in five ten minutes and in order to fill it it's a little trickier because you're going to have to do what i mentioned before which is fill like your bathtub or your sink and pump the water from that reservoir that's already full into your tank uh, just make sure your pump isn't pumping water faster than say your sink's filling up or your bathtub's filling up uh, otherwise you, your pump will run it dry and make sure that also your sink isn't overflowing and your bathtub's overflowing. So I hit pros and cons there. Pro, it's super fast and it's super easy to use a pump. You just put the pump in the tank or you put the pump in the bathtub and you can go either way with the water. There's also pumps that you can put in between that will pump water one way and then the other. Those are quite a bit more expensive. So getting into the cons, pumps uh, can be pretty expensive depending on what kind you want and how much convenience you want. Uh, they also require electricity, of course, so you'll need access to electricity. And if you're doing full water changes, 
Uh, using a pump like this one, it can't run dry, so you can only get to the bottom two or three inches before you need to turn the pump off and come up with some other way to get the rest of the water out. And that's a pump for you. All right, so the last method I want to talk about is really popular when it comes to doing water changes, and that's using the boa. King Cobra. Ah, Python, that's the snake. It's using the Python system. And the Python system also has a bunch of copycats that make it a little cheaper on the market if you want to go that route. But it basically is a hose similar to a siphon hose. So the basics of how the Python system works is you hook it into your faucet and you turn your faucet on and that creates suction and takes water from your tank and puts it into your sink while your faucet's running. And for the reverse process, all you have to do is flip the valve on the Python system and that makes the water coming out of your sink go into the hose and it fills your tank up. So it does the reverse process. Now, pros to the system are obvious. It, it can be really convenient because all you need is a sink, which most people have access to in their house. Second, it's really mess free. You're just putting a hose from your sink to here without a lot of moving of parts. So you're going on to drain it, flip the valve to fill it. All right, so cons with this Python system are it could be a little expensive, uh, typically more than a pool pump or obviously the gravity fed system, which is free, but there are cheaper options out there. There's actually a lot of DIY videos on how to make your own Python system, which is always cool. Um, always gives you that satisfaction that you built this and it works and that's always a great feeling. Second con is a lot of faucets you're gonna have to modify in order to install the Python system into the threads of the faucet. I live in an apartment and I have faucets that would require a little bit of work every time I want to install the Python system in order for it to actually be effective and work. So that's one of the reasons I don't use the Python system is I just don't want to modify my faucets in my apartment that I don't own. So third reason, and I think the biggest con for the Python system is in order to get that suction to drain your tank into the sink, you need your sink running through that Python system. So, so you need your sink running the entire time that you're draining your tank. It's a little bit faster than this. That's a lot of water that you're not using for anything but to just get a siphon essentially going. And I think that's a huge waste of water and that's my biggest reason why I don't like the Python system. If you were to mix it and say use the gravity fed method like I'm using right now for my tank and then fill it up with the Python system, I think that's a great method. However, it's kind of expensive and overkill. So those are the three main ways that I would do a water change. So we still have a little more time to talk about water changes while this is draining. Three more things that I want to drive home while you're doing a water change that are really important is number one, if you're doing a large water change like I am, remember to turn off your filter. Once you get below the intake of your filter, it's not gonna be pulling up any more water and feeding your filter, but it will be pushing water out of your filter and then eventually your filter is probably gonna run dry. And most aquarium filters, unless they're fancy or expensive and know how to deal with something like this, they don't run dry and they will probably destroy themselves over time. So best not risk it and unplug it so it does not run dry. Second, and along those lines of unplugging things, unplug your heater. Similar to filters, heaters are not meant to run dry. They need to be under the water. Um, some of them have built-in safeguards, but again, a lot of them don't. So they are going to overheat. They can be destroyed that way, and they can even break and burst apart, which obviously would be detrimental to the any inhabitants inside during your water change. I guess the last thing I want to talk about is when I'm going to start filling this back up, it's important that you remember to condition your water. So I'm going to be doing 100% water change. So when I start filling this back up, I'm actually not going to have Harold in the tank because I'm not gonna have them running around there when there's no water in there. If I was gonna do a 75% water change, then uh, every 25 gallons that I'm filling it up, I would add this water conditioner. So if I went down to 25%, I would fill it up to 50, add the necessary amount, get up to 75, add the necessary amount, add the final 25%, and add the necessary amount of water conditioner, and you're all set. Um, you could do it at the end, uh, a lot of people don't recommend it because you're putting that chlorinated water in your tank and it's going to kill any beneficial bacteria I might have in that sand or anything I have in there. I turned the filter off, so that should be all right. If you're doing just a smaller water change, you can just put this water conditioner in at the end. 
um, just to make sure that small amount of chlorinated water is cleaned up. And of course, the aquarium gods out there would say, never put water directly into your tank from your tap or well, because if it's chlorinated, it's gonna immediately kill everything in there, but that's not practical for the normal person. We can't just have this giant reservoir of water already treated, ready to pump into the tank. Um, so yeah, just either do it incrementally when you're doing big, big water changes or uh, just at the end for small water changes and you will be perfectly fine. All right, I'm bored. I'm gonna speed up time and let's get this thing drained so we can fill it right back up. All right, tank's drained. Took like 30 minutes, so I got a ton of cleaning done and I got all set up for what's going to be our new basking area and tank theme. I'm not gonna show you what it is in this video, teaser, sorry, but Harold's getting restless in his sad, sad bucket. So let's get this filled back up, get Harold back in here with the new theme that you'll see in the future. Let's get to it. All right, so in order to fill the tank up, I need to get water into this hose somehow. How am I gonna do that? Well, it's easy. We're in the bathtub, so what provides water in the bathtub? Well, the shower head. What I have installed in the shower head is this adapter. It has this little valve here that either directs the water directly into the shower head or out this little nozzle here. So this thread here has a certain diameter and obviously that's not gonna work with our little hose here. So I have this little adapter piece, which is basically a brass ribbed adapter that you can screw on here. Now you'll notice I have a little Teflon tape already on the threads on this adapter. And that's just to reduce any potential leaking. You do the same thing with your shower head uh, typically, so doing the same thing for this adapter. All right, we got our rib section here. All right, all you're gonna do is take your hose and you're gonna force it on to that nozzle there with the ribs, with the ribs there, your water can't leak out. You're gonna turn on your faucet and what you wanna do first is get your water to a temperature comfortable for your turtle. All right, so right now I have the valve set to the shower. I'm gonna put it to our hose. I'm gonna flip that. All right, water is going through the hose. And there you have it, folks, from the shower head to the tank. All right, so I'm gonna fill this up. What's next? We got the 100 gallon pond to fill. That's downstairs. I'm gonna hop downstairs and show you what's up. All right, so we're in the mudroom of my basement now. This is where the turtle tub is. Ooh, there it is. Now, say hello to Moses and some goldfish friends. What I'm gonna use to start this siphon is just a regular old garden hose. Put it on in down to the water. You can't see it, but the tub is actually on some cinder blocks to give it a little bit of height because uh, I actually thought ahead for once and realized I needed some sort of height to drain this tank and that's gonna give me just enough to start a siphon. The same thing again, you're gonna suck it. I'm just gonna use bucket today. I know I told you buckets are too much to lug, but this is just draining it. All I have is the distance of my garage, which is about 20 feet. So I'm just gonna dip a bucket in here, take out about half the water, and then I'll show you how I fill it. All right, let's be honest. I wish I used the siphon method. That was still too much work, but it's drained about 75%. It's time to fill it up. All right, so this is gonna seem a little ridiculous, but I'm gonna take this end of the hose all the way up to my shower head, and I'm gonna hook it up there. This is a single piece of hose. It's 100 feet long, so I have no issues with it going through an apartment because it's not gonna leak anywhere. It doesn't have any attachments like this halfway through, and it's just long enough to make that shower head. So let's hook it up and let's fill that tub back up and we'll be done here. I've brought our hose all the way upstairs to the bathtub and it has a slightly different end that's a little bigger. But to fix that problem, I have an adapter that fits this new hose that I'm using for the tub downstairs. And that just fits right onto that same threaded spigot. A little Teflon tape on there to 
stop it from leaking everywhere. Take your hose and you'll just screw it on. Let's probably take two hands, one second. All right, we got this thing screwed on there. And again, we're gonna have the water start up, get the right temperature. Water's good. Flip the valve and turn it on. It's going. And there you have it. From one floor away, we got water into the tub, easy as pie.